Um, I'm going to talk today about the uh, document processing automation or is, uh, in other words, it's called intelligent document processing, but it's about how we use, uh, how we use AI ML to automate processes around uh, documents in various formats. Uh, today, uh, my talk uh, uh, not gonna be very technical in details, but uh, I gonna share uh, um, just introduction why it is important, what steps and uh, what value we are bringing to our customers. Uh, I will share um, one of uh, practical use cases from my recent experience, uh, and I will talk about the technologies and tools that we use uh, in order to leverage uh, natural language processing and to build solution for the client. A uh, couple of ways how we tackle these uh, problems. So that's uh, hopefully it will be uh, helpful for you. Uh, also, it might be a little bit on the high level uh, of a of the description uh, of the content, but it will definitely bring some uh, insights uh, how we approach this problem and what tools and technology uh, you may use and we're using. So um, uh, document process, yeah, just agenda about today. <laughs> Uh, today's uh, talk about uh, document process and practical case and they said tools and technologies. So why it is important? Document processing, uh, while it's still left in financial services, it's not only financial services, it's actually in uh, many industries, including the financial, uh, healthcare, manufacturing, retail, uh, a lot of uh, enterprises currently still uh, have data in a structured format, meaning documents. Uh, it could be uh, paper documents, it could be electronic documents. Um, electronic is definitely much better than uh, than paper, but still uh, information may, uh, may be presented in an uh, unstructured way. That makes it pretty hard to um, automate uh, uh, business processes around these documents. That's why uh, uh, enterprises uh, and smaller companies, uh, uh, most of them uh, globally uh, have plans to decrease the amount of papers and uh, are looking for some insights and automation around the business process involving the documents. And there is generally uh, uh, a huge potential for AI here. You see this number $1.2 trillion uh, by the 2035 by added value uh, in this industry. So uh, let's talk about the challenges. Uh, why it is important uh, for industries to automate document processing, uh, and actually uh, what is quite challenging, uh, quite challenging right now. Yeah, uh, uh, what's happening when you have to uh, build your current processes uh, involving different documents? So. Uh, the first, it's about high cost of operation. What is high cost? Uh, it's usually because it, it involves uh, a lot of uh, um, human power, because you definitely need to read documents, you need to uh, analyze the documents. And uh, honestly speaking, we as a humans don't do it very fast. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, though we have we're much more intelligent than uh, machines right now, but still uh, it costs a lot of uh, money to companies. The next reason is high incidence of error. Uh, despite our high uh, intelligence, uh, this process is quite, um, I would say, routine and tedious. So it, it, as a result, the, the errors occurs. Uh, the next problem, which we are uh, pretty often talking about when speaking about document processing, is the data is uh, uh, comes uh, in a different um, uh, different formats, different uh, ways of pre uh, presentation in different uh, from different sources. So uh, data is uh, uh, heterogeneous in general, so it's quite different to automate and apply some rule-based uh, techniques uh, to extract 
some useful information uh, from the document. I imagine just uh, just regular uh, invoice uh, that may come from different suppliers. Uh, we basically presenting the same information, like the same pattern of information in this document, but different uh, companies will have its own format, its own way of presenting this document. So it's very different. Uh, multiple formats, paper, digital, um, electronic documents, uh, scanned documents, it's all different. And even electronic documents may come in PDF, in doc, in whatever other format. Uh, it may be, so it, it, have, it, so it has some, its own um, uh, challenges here. Um, Manual process. Uh, it's one of the main reasons of uh, high cost of operation, and it really includes sometimes uh, quite large teams uh, to process uh, information. Uh, and long turnaround time, meaning we spend enough, in quite a long time to uh, do some typical jobs, quite routine jobs, in order to uh, get some insights from the documents. So uh, that's why we're applying technology. Uh, technology uh, may really help uh, help us in this situation in order to uh, extract uh, information from the documents uh, when we're talking about the documents uh, and it may uh, increase the speed uh, and the quality uh, of data we are receiving. So what technology we are using to Automate document processing, uh, optical character recognition for computer and vision in general. So uh, that's uh, in cases when we have uh, scanned documents or when we have uh, uh, some images uh, um, of the documents, uh, then we need to uh, apply uh, optical character recognition in order to transform it actually to, to the uh, text format. Um, then uh, process orchestration or business process management, depending on the case, uh, basically because uh, document processing is multi-step process and we need to orchestrate uh, in order to uh, scale the process in general. And in many cases, uh, document processing involves human uh, as, a, as a step or human interaction as a step in this process. That's why uh, it's, uh, sometimes pretty convenient to build this um, around business process management uh, engines. Uh, and analytics, inference and decision making. That's like uh, the core, uh, the core brain of the solution when we uh, have some text, when we have some uh, insights from the text, we need to uh, come up with some decisions uh, based on uh, based on this information. And here we can apply our advanced uh, analytics uh, techniques here. Uh, machine learning comes together with uh, natural language processing and that's the, uh, the main force power of the uh, document processing automation. Uh, it comes in a variety of technologies. Uh, um, some of them uh, like well-known from the natural language process like document classification, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty common technique, it's pretty common uh, uh, tool that we can use for, for this, um, but still it's very relevant for the, um, uh, for the domain and for the task we're talking right now. Uh, text similarity, when we need to compare like two pieces uh, of the text, it could be like a couple of words, uh, uh, or it could be uh, paragraphs or even pages of the document, document that we need to compare. Uh, named entity extraction, uh, when we need to extract something like uh, names of the people, locations, company names, or some specific numbers, uh, some specific values uh, from the document. Uh, information extraction, pretty wide term. It's, uh, it, we will talk a lot about information extraction today, but uh, that means then it, we, uh, need, we need to extract some useful information from the document, uh, whether it could be a small piece like company name, which company uh, is referred in this report, for example, 
uh, what was the uh, total uh, revenue of the company in previous year. That's all information extraction cases. Or we can, for example, identify um, uh, on which page of the report, uh, for example, uh, some uh, letter from COE uh, is located. Yeah, very different uh, situation, but it's all about information extraction. Uh, extraction. Uh, relationship uh, extraction when we need to uh, make a relation, relationship between two pieces of information within doc document sentiment analysis it's about uh, and that's very common for document processing but sometimes we need to understand uh, the sentiment was it positive or negative uh, and in many cases uh, these sentiment uh, can be domain specific for example from the company reports, uh, we can um, uh, we may want to understand uh, uh, was uh, the year successful the company in general or not very. So that is uh, still uh, sentiment analysis. Topic modeling: uh, if we need to have some uh, add uh, some tax uh, uh, or classify of this document in general. So. Uh, multiple technologies, some of them uh, we'll uh, discuss uh, briefly and approaches to them uh, today. Um, document process, uh, processing is a workflow. Uh, it is uh, usually pretty well uh, automated and uh, there is a typical um, uh, workflow we can talk about. Uh, how um, document is traveling in the system from the ingestion to uh, having some uh, decisions or just maybe information stored uh, in the uh, downstream application. So uh, let's uh, walk through uh, the process. So it's on the high level, uh, it consists of pre-processing, extraction and post-processing uh, of the document. Um, uh, let's uh, begin from the uh, uh, document ingest ingesting into the system. So we have incoming document. Uh, imagine if uh, we have this document as a scanned uh, document, for example. So it, it's basically an image for us at this step. Um, we may apply some uh, image preprocessing techniques, very basic techniques like uh, cropping image, uh, straighten an image maybe if it is needed uh, reduce noise uh, something like this it's not machine learning but it's uh, uh, it may help us uh, to, uh, to work with uh, these documents later uh, data capture data capture this is where uh, the first step of the magic happens uh, we need to convert it from an image, image to text um, the tools we use here is uh, optical character recognition tools. Uh, it's pretty well uh, developed area with its own players. Uh, we don't, uh, uh, well, we usually reuse uh, existing software here, in our practice at least. Um, and uh, we just, uh, the main purpose here is to uh, come from image to, uh, to the actual presentation of the information. Then we may work, uh, uh, we may, uh, work with the document as a text. So uh, the next step will be, um, if needed, definitely, uh, indexing, uh, storing the document and classification. Uh, in many cases, we need to understand, uh, for example, which type of document it is, or we may need to understand if this document is relevant to the business process we are working uh, on. For example, we may um, grab multiple documents from open sources and, and the first step we need to understand whether it is relevant uh, uh, to the documents we're looking for. For example, uh, we may uh, track uh, documents uh, that contain the description of uh, merger and acquisition transactions. And we may uh, get these documents from open sources and we need to understand whether these documents uh, actually contain description of uh, merging acquisition transaction, uh, transaction or not. If it contains, we can uh, step to the uh, next uh, uh, step in this process, actually extraction. And uh, we can talk uh, on a couple approaches of what information and in what uh, format and what tools we may use uh, 
for the information extraction, but that is actually when we apply natural language uh, techniques and there are a variety of them depending on uh, uh, what type of information we're extracting. We will talk uh, in a minute about uh, a couple of them. <clears throat> After that, usually we're validating uh, information. Basically, if it's uh, all okay, we can uh, validate just like by type. So we can validate information against some external data source uh, if it is available. Uh, we have basically the result. We, we extracted information where we were interested in. Um, we can pass this information into downstream application, just store it and uh, use uh, in the uh, business process how it was um, uh, targeted. In many cases, uh, we have so-called functionality of human in the loop. Yeah, because um, information extraction uh, sometimes pretty complex uh, tasks depending on the format of the documents. And uh, we may leverage uh, human intelligence here uh, in the way that we, we may grab uh, the uh, portion of results, maybe uh, the result they come with a lower level of um, confidence that is was correct extraction. And we can send these uh, small portion of uh, results uh, to the human validation. Human uh, will check whether it is correct. Uh, if it is uh, not correct, it will uh, mm, uh, adjust results. And this information, this feedback from the user will be uh, utilized in the retraining uh, cycle uh, of the extraction engine in order to improve its accuracy. So basically, the extraction engine will learn about from the uh, learn about uh, uh, feedback from the user and uh, uh, in uh, enhance uh, extraction models on the next iteration. So that's uh, basically how it works. And let's uh, talk about what um, impact does it have. Yeah. Um, uh, for example, uh, in many cases uh, uh, that we had in our practice, uh, our clients were doing some uh, routine work with documents, uh, probably with a team of some uh, guys outsourced somewhere in India uh, or in any country uh, like Romania, Ukraine, whatever country, but uh, some country, uh, some uh, some outsource efforts uh, for the team of people uh, doing uh, this uh, document processing job for weeks or sometimes months, yeah, depending on the size of the batch of documents they need to process. Uh, it is long, it is, it requires a lot of uh, human power, and it's not error prone so uh, errors uh, may uh, occur so mm, when we automate we usually uh, what um, uh, what uh, results uh, what impact document processor automation have at least in projects we've seen first is uh, improved compliance and governance meaning uh, um, we are able to utilize results uh, to follow some regulations. Uh, we are able to apply these results in order to, um, to ensure that uh, information is used correctly. Next, faster turnaround on time. That's one of the main reasons uh, and one of the main impacts uh, actually. Because um, in most cases, the time of processing decreases dramatically. It, we're talking uh, sometimes uh, degrees of time of processing batch of documents from uh, weeks or months to days or hours. That's why it's usually much, much faster. Improved accuracy. Um, uh, it's usually uh, at least not worth them uh, human uh, accuracy of information extraction, but in many cases, uh, even uh, much better. Um, streamlined document uh, tracking, because uh, everything is uh, automated. 
uh, ability to handle multiple variant formats uh, independent of the uh, implementation, but it's possible to work with different formats uh, if there is uh, such a requirement. Uh, have of course productivity and efficiency, definitely, because uh, when <laughs> we are uh, freeing people, uh, human labor from doing this routine work, they're able to uh, do, to do these, uh, their primary jobs much more efficient and they're receiving information much, much faster and reduce cost because we do it faster, we do it with, more, uh, uh, with much better accuracy, it's definitely reducing the, the cost. A uh, couple use cases, uh, that's uh, from the financial uh, um, uh, vertical, but uh, for the banking, it could be uh, mortgage processing, for example, when uh, people are applying for, uh, for mortgage, uh, they are submitting a lot of documents and uh, they need to be uh, processed uh, and it's much better if it's done uh, in automatic way. Account opening uh, forms and load applica loan applications, different formats of loan applications. Uh, they need to, uh, banks need to process uh, uh, documents, especially if it is for a small and medium enterprises. Uh, it may be some reports with uh, hundreds of pages, but they're looking for that fraction of information in this document. That's why uh, it saves much, much time for the financial institution. Insurance, claims processing, the automatic claims processing, uh, people submitting uh, documents. These documents usually uh, are well-structured with well-known uh, well patterns. So it's uh, uh, really a great case for the uh, automation and saving time uh, while processing these documents. Um, let's now talk about tools and technology that we may uh, apply to these um, type of tasks, let's say, yeah. Uh, the first uh, that is coming to my mind that we have pretty good offering from Google, AWS, Azure with the services that can handle document automation and document processing automation. Uh, uh, basically, each uh, cloud provider has its own its pros uh, uh, and some nuances how to work with them. But basically, they uh, provide that they have uh, nice tools to uh, to uh, to automate basic tasks in document process. For Google, we can rely on Cloud Vision API for OCR tasks. Cloud, na <clears throat> cloud natural language uh, service is able to extract named entities, classify parts uh, of the text within the document. Uh, cloud translation is helpful if you have the documents uh, in the uh, uh, in the in different languages. And um, recent addition to uh, Google Cloud uh, platform, which is form parts, and they have invoice parts specific um, for like for invoices, uh, which is able to extract um, uh, well-structured information with the key value part from the document, like from invoices or some other typical uh, forms. Uh, on AWS, we have text, uh, text track, which combines uh, OCR with uh, document uh, analytical tools and comprehend with the uh, nature language capabilities uh, in general. Translate is available for Translate differently. On the Azure side, we have uh, Read API for OCR, text analytics uh, for um, extraction information from the documents and specific uh, offering for form recogni recognition of form parsing it's called form uh, recognizer from the uh, from the Microsoft, but uh, they are covering these all offering these all APIs are covering uh, basic cases uh, of uh, document processing, and uh, if um, uh, if the client is okay with uh, having the data on cloud and relying on some particular <coughs> cloud provider, I would recommend uh, to cover these basic cases uh, with uh, these uh, services. 
some edge cases or some specifics uh, can be covered by custom models on either of these uh, models. But in many cases, or in some cases, um, uh, clients um, have the requirement, for example, of uh, cloud neutrality, it means he's not, he doesn't want to rely, rely on uh, APIs from the cloud providers or there are restrictions of storing data or cloud or any other reasons why client does want to go uh, to the uh, to the uh, cloud offerings for uh, document automation. In this case, uh, there are a bunch of uh, open source tools and projects that, that may actually uh, help us uh, <clears throat> delivering this uh, functionality. <coughs> And uh, uh, and um, I will talk today uh, about um, a couple, uh, let's say, separate tasks and how we can uh, approach them using available open source uh, tools um, with different level of maturity, but basically how to solve the problems or separate problems within document process and automation. So, uh, the first task is a layout analysis. Um, so what's the reason, what, what we need to have, what we need to do this uh, here. So basically we need to identify and categorize uh, the uh, regions, uh, regions of interest within the document. Uh, remember that the document may be uh, image itself or it may be a, a scan document scan PDF, or, or, uh, as uh, we call this scan PDF uh, sandwich PDFs, because they contain layer of the image and uh, OCR level on top that contains actual characters. Or PDF documents could be uh, electronic uh, originally, we call it search searchable PDFs. Uh, it doesn't matter much uh, which uh, type of for PDF document we are talking about, but we still need to um, understand uh, uh, where information is located and what type of information uh, is located uh, here. So that's why we can uh, we align on these layout analysis tools. What tools we can use in order to uh, process the, these with, with this task? Uh, this is obviously uh, a combination of computer vision plus uh, natural language processing in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, domain of uh, AI. Uh, the first tool that uh, we uh, usually use here is OpenCV, uh, and uh, even without uh, uh, without uh, training machine learning models, uh, sometimes in some cases when the document structure is pretty, I would say, typical uh, within the project, and the pattern of the structure of the document is uh, the same with the uh, uh, the same for all the documents, and it's pretty the pattern is pretty strong. Uh, we can detect this structure or layout of the document having uh, open CV tools and manipulation with uh, uh, OpenCV uh, itself. But um, pretty often the, the structure or format of the document is not that strong. That's why we need some more advanced tools. Uh, and uh, here we usually use the combination of uh, object detection from computer vision uh, and uh, natural language processing. That's why um, as a tools I have here uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow, which has uh, both uh, the deep learning libraries has its um, uh, object detection, um, uh, object detection uh, models. And specifically from the PyTorch uh, era, we have Detectron uh, 2, which is uh, pretty capable, capable of uh, identifying and segmenting these, um, these errors within document. And the, I can advise you to, uh, to uh, implementations. Uh, they are both on the Tiftron 2. Uh, 
but trained on different uh, databases, uh, data sets uh, for uh, document layout uh, analysis and segmentation. So the first one is basically um, uh, trained on uh, medical papers and the, the second one on uh, another data, sample, uh, data set with a general uh, domain uh, general domain uh, documents but uh, it doesn't matter much which uh, which one you use uh, this is pre-trained models uh, which is very easy to uh, to use you basically load the uh, the package you load your document and you have this uh, uh, identification of the areas but they will be pretty common yeah uh, let's have a look back on these uh, uh, images. Uh, what we will be able to detect? We'll be able to detect uh, headings, uh, paragraphs, images, tables, uh, basically speaking, common uh, areas, uh, uh, common areas and regions uh, of the document. If you uh, want to have like a step ahead or you have some specificity in your uh, document structure and you need to understand the specificity, you how uh, may change your own model uh, you then, um, uh, using uh, some additional labeling with uh, specific regions that you may have in, in these uh, documents um, and you will achieve uh, you will achieve uh, in um, in uh, some cases uh and uh, in the in the use case i've shared with you previously uh we needed to convert our pdf document in some semi-structured representation it's basically a tree-based representation of the information uh within the document so uh that's why uh we utilize uh detection of the common areas like paragraph like uh uh, like like table uh, within the document, and then we apply custom logic on that uh, in order to uh, to uh, understand the structure and relationship between these objects uh, on the document. And as a result, we have this um, semi-structured repre representation uh, of our document, which was quite easy uh, to process later because, as I said. Uh, as I said previously, it had very good uh, pattern of the representation of the information. Uh, the next uh, typical task we have in uh, document uh, uh, processing automation is form parsing. Uh, forms could be different. Uh, on this screen, you see uh, like invoice. And uh, by form, we mean that uh, we have values that follow a pretty strong pattern, and uh, it's a key value pattern. For example, we have amount, amount due, and the value. We have invoice number and the value for invoice number. We have date of issue and we have the value for this date. Uh, so um, uh, it's a well known. Uh, well-known problem for the uh, well-known task or let's say for the document processing uh, and there are a couple approaches couple uh, couple uh, tools how to uh, tackle this task how to extract this information out of pdf document so uh, basically we want to do the uh, here end-to-end -end information extraction and to end mean means we want to define it in the PDF document, where it is located in the, in the PDF document and having these um, couple documents as a sample, we want to extract it from the uh, new and previously unseen documents. Uh, and again, the requirement here uh, in order to apply this, uh, we need to have this uh, key value pattern and it should be pretty strong as uh, we see it uh, in invoice documents, um, uh, there is a good um, uh, there is a good uh, uh, model. I would say the good solution uh, available open source called, called Invoicenet. It was specifically trained and uh, 
um, uh, its capabilities was shown on uh, parsing invoices, uh, but it's capable of extracting information from uh, other documents uh, as well. So it has um, graphical user interface, simple graphical user interface, plus uh, it is accessible uh, via API and command line interface. And basically uh, you are um, providing a couple of sample documents for these, um, <clears throat> for this uh, package. You are defining uh, what fields you want to extract and, uh, and actually you're defining what is the value for these uh, target documents, sample documents. You can train model, uh, extraction model based on this uh, information you've provided and you will be able you will be able to extract information from um, previously unseen documents uh, out of the box the accuracy will uh, depend greatly um, on, on the pattern of the document and uh, for the cases uh, where it is uh, pretty Strong and obvious, uh, the accuracy could be pretty good around uh, 80 90 percent. Um, named entity recognition that's another way of uh, extraction uh, information from the documents, and uh, this is basically extraction information from the plain text. When you already transformed your document in the text. You can search for the specific uh, um, uh, entities within this text. Uh, by entities, I mean uh, that's uh, unstructured task uh, which falls into some pretty predefined one of the some uh, one of uh, predefined categories. For example, uh, it could be person name, organization, location, some other value. Uh, what tools we're using uh, here in order to achieve this, um, <clears throat> uh, in order to achieve these uh, tasks. Uh, there are a couple of well, um, well-known tools like Spacey. It's a nice um, natural language processing library, which comes with, uh, uh, which comes uh, with uh, pre-trained models, which is able to extract uh, around 15 um, entities out of the box. It's pretty common entities like um, uh, company, uh, person name, location, money, um, numbers, uh, and some others. And um, it comes with a very easy uh, tool for training custom models. We've been, we've been using uh, this library for extraction information, uh, for building custom extractor uh, for um, uh, financial, uh, for extract, uh, extracting financial values from the document. For example, we needed to extract uh, the value of the revenue, for example, from the company report or company press release. Uh, we needed to extract a num uh, we needed to extract the number of uh, costs for some specific project uh, from the document. Uh, and we were able to uh, successfully train these type of models uh, with uh, Spacey. Uh, another options um, which is uh, quite handy is uh, leveraging uh, um, cutting edge uh, transformer model, transformer models uh, uh, that is uh, quite popular right now. And uh, you can both uh, use pre-trained uh, categories, uh, pre-trained models to extract uh, basic named, uh, named entities, or you can train your own uh, uh, leveraging, uh, again, this semantic knowledge or semantic model of the language uh, from the pre-trained models. Uh, the next uh, tasks that is uh, pretty, uh, pretty common, uh, pretty common in document process uh, automation, it's a paragraph classification or identification. Uh, in this task, we need to detect some par paragraph that contains some relevant uh, information, usually within pretty large uh, documents. 
imagine that you have the document containing uh, 300 or 400 pages, some uh, legal contract or some, uh, for example, financial report uh, of the company, and you're looking for specific information uh, in the document, and you don't need to maybe extract exact value, but, but you need to understand where this information is located. So basically you're looking for the, uh, for the paragraph that contains some semantics, some meaning, yeah? And uh, this is the task of the classification. You need to classify, uh, classify um, and detect uh, the paragraph, which is uh, like a short uh, piece of text and uh, for this task, we're leveraging um, transformer models, uh, which basically is uh, um, transforming our text into some uh, into some vector, into some uh, numeric vector. And uh, the nice thing that we can uh, next compare these uh, vectors to each other and we can find similar uh, pieces of text. Uh, and that could be the paragraphs that we're looking for. Uh, for these tasks, we are uh, leveraging our Transformers library and uh, uh, recent addition uh, to these uh, Transformers, uh, uh, which is universal sentence encoder, which is successfully transforming these sentences or small pieces of text into some vector presentation with the extremely good capabilities of comparing them uh, between each other. So uh, that is uh, basically an example, yeah, uh, how we can compare small pieces of text, not only in the individual words, but that is a, a sentence, uh, or in some cases, it could be paragraphs uh, used in the same way. Um, Mm, so basically, you see, I like my phone, uh, which uh, very similar uh, phrase to my phone is not uh, is not good. Yeah, it's all talking about the uh, the phones. Uh, your cell phone looks great. So uh, small piece, a small sentence. Uh, well, it, it have different uh, sentiment positive and negative, but it all contains some information regarding the phone. So uh, this is how uh, this uh, uh, universal sentence in, in quarter actually works. And well, that's basically it. <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, so uh, I've covered not very uh, low level details, but still approaches how we tackle these problems uh, uh, using open, uh, using available open source tools. Uh, in our practice, uh, we deal with uh, both scenarios. Sometimes uh, we are leveraging uh, cloud providers on Google or, uh, or Amazon. And for some clients, we have to build some custom solutions. Um, and it's not only because uh, they have some restrictions uh, of their uh, and policy of storing information in the cloud, but uh, in many cases, because they want uh, more control of the process or they have specific requirements that are not covered by the cloud provider. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, um, uh, thank you for your attention and uh, I'll be happy to answer questions.